hey everybody. I always do that, <clears throat> right? I never start with the right page, but what I have done is made sure that everyone can hear me today. <laughs> that is half the battle, half the battle. Welcome, welcome, welcome everyone. I am so happy to have you here, whether you are in the Twitterverse listening, if you are on Facebook listening, Twitch, YouTube, wherever you are, welcome. If you have joined Inequality, um, we are the space between inequality. So welcome again. I'm always very grateful that people decide to join me on a Saturday. Um, it's been a really crazy week here. The Super Bowl is here, which is why this is so late. I really had intended on volunteering all week, but I had some issues. Um that you don't need to really know about. <laughs> but anyways, I am here and I've kind of enjoyed relaxing, you know, during the day and then having my show at night. I'm not sure if that's good enough for everybody else, but it has worked out for me. <laughs> All right. So as usual, I want to point you to uh, the chat if you're on, on Twitch. All of the articles and references that I use today will be in the chat if you're on YouTube or Facebook. There's even more stuff um, of from what I have researched getting ready for this show. And I don't know if you guys can hear right now, but my heart is beating so <laughs> fast and hard. I still get nervous before every single one of these podcasts, but today I'm extra nervous because I have some awesome, awesome people here joining me today. So <clears throat> if you have questions or comments that you want to make sure is in uh, this conversation, then please make sure you highlight them. If you're on Twitch, if you're not, don't worry, just put your comments in and I am going to be looking at them, whether you're on Facebook or on YouTube as well. So let's start with a question <clears throat> for you guys as we get ready for our special guest today. How many of you out there are married? How long have you been married? How many of you out there are single? How long have you been single? And then if you're in a long-term relationship, but you live, but you live with them, but you're not married, I want to know about that too. Married 26. We're we're gonna get to that, D sharp. <laughs> but yeah, put it in the chat. If whether you're married, how long you've been married, whether you're in a committed relationship and living with someone but not married, put how long you've been doing that in the chat. And then if you're single, like me, for two years or three years or however long you've been single put that in the chat as well. I would love to hear it. All right, let me get my phone back up here because I want to make sure that I am looking here at the chat. All right, all right, all right, all right. So let's jump in here, all right? Um, make sure you follow, subscribe, all that good stuff so that you know when we're going to get started here. As you can see, the times are different. And that's the only reason why I'm pointing that out. Um, probably still always be on Saturdays, but the times are just flexible now to kind of go with what the people um, can do for me when they're, <laughs> I don't want to be demanding. So if they need to be me to be flexible, then that's what I'm going to do. I am Twana, Twana's Twitch. This is the Inequality Podcast, where we aim to be that space between inequality. The mission is to provide that space to learn grow, shift our perspectives, share ideas and challenge social norms in a positive way. We will work to move from having conversations to effective action, disrupting the complacency we have towards inequality in the richest country in the world. Every subject will be approached with an open mind and the chance to see things in a different light. And hopefully do the same for the audience. <laughs> Being in this space means that we advocate for people we help others to remove their blinders while we're also removing ours. We need to see other people the way they are, appreciate their perspective and their journey. My wish is that we all recognize that everyone wants and deserves the same things in life. Be a valuable contributor to our communities, live in a safe neighborhood, free of crime, thriving, not just surviving. So today's special guests are an amazing couple that I met through Twitch. There are some really awesome gamers, DJs, podcasters on Twitch, and this is how we met. They've been married for 25 years and have words of wisdom and humor to pass along to us today. Um, we'll also talk a little bit about the NAACP. It's their anniversary tomorrow. We'll figure out how to weave Valentine's Day into the conversation and learn more about Flo Kennedy in our celebration of blackness. So again, 
my special guests are Clarence and Yolanda Lewis. Before I bring you guys on, I just want to read something from the authors. And this is directly from them. I don't want to speak their words too much. <laughs> so I'm just going to read this part and then we're going to turn it over to them. So every marriage has its own melody, its own beat, its own rhythm. Marriages go through twists, turns, changes, and turnarounds. We are constantly learning what our rhythm is and will be. As a great DJ reads the mood of a crowd, learning when to play more of this or less of that, so do we manage the composition that is our marriage. It's like the way a song doesn't start as the finished product we wear we hear on the radio. It often starts as a phrase or a line that the artist finds meaning in, and it is developed through time, effort, trial and error to become a full expression of the artist's thoughts and emotions. Even, even after the song is recorded, the artist may not consider it to be finished. Whenever they perform it, they play it differently because they are different. The song evolves as they do. That's so amazing. This is how the writing in this book goes, by the way. <laughs> While our song is not yet finished, we wrote this book to share how it has evolved from the beginning until now. The Rhythm of Love, 25 Things That 25 Years of Marriage Taught Us, is a peek into our quarter century together and a bit of the music we've made. Excuse me. In it, we reflect on how we reached this point, the successes and the stumbles along the way, and the revisions that remain ongoing. So if you're a person who enjoys learning and growing through life's ups and downs, dive in with us. In these pages, you will find out how we've learned grown and composed our melody, our beat, our rhythm. Now, <laughs> let's hear from them. <laughs> Hi guys. Hi. Sorry, everyone. I was clapping for, I was clapping for, I was I was clapping for the audience. <laughs> <laughs> Yay! Actually, you know what? I've been playing around. I got something for you. Wait, wait, wait. Here we go. You ready? Yep. Yep. Oh. Very nice, very nice. <laughs> so how are you guys doing today? We're doing We're good. We're doing great, yes. That's good. It's So it's Saturday. What was the best part of your week? This week? What was the best part? The best part of my week this week was sitting here doing exactly what we're doing now. Uh, we did it once before this week, so <laughs> these I have become that. the favorite parts of my week. It's <laughs> that... just talking um, to Twitch fam, to online fam, to friends, um, <laughs> and it's it's been amazing. It's been fun, and we got to do it twice this week. <laughs> yes, you sure. guys, I'm telling you when when I when I say that, I feel like you could hear my heart pounding <laughs> through. I am just so excited and grateful that y'all have been really patient with me <laughs> to come on and share this time with me. Thank you so much. We, 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 we understand. We yes. understand. We appreciate you giving us the opportunity. And, you know, it was it, it was absolutely our pleasure and, and no no issue at all for us to give you as much time as you need. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. All right. So <laughs> before we kind of dive in, sure, I, I want you guys to tell us about your individual selves before we get into your union. So let's start with the ladies, Yolanda. Give us some your some of your background and, and give us a really something that's really surprising about you that we would not know that we would not learn in the book. Ooh, Ooh, we we revealed a lot in the book. Yes, so <laughs> <laughs> let me see. Um, that's gonna be a really tough one. Hey, uh, start with just telling us about yourselves, and then when yep. you think about it, we can come back to that. Sure. Okay. Um, so a little bit about me. I am from um the DC, Maryland, Virginia area. And um, I have three younger sisters and one younger brother. Um, and uh, let's see, I grew up in the church. Um, my father was a preacher and a pastor. And um, I used to 
interpret with sign language. That's, 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 that's something, something that we, we, we did not know. mention in the book. Uh, you did not. Um, that's awesome. Yes, I would interpret. I was on the team of interpreters that would interpret the service for the deaf and hard of hearing. Uh, that was something that I, I really loved and had a great time with. Um, and let's see, I have uh, graduated with my bachelor's degree in biochemistry and my master's degree in public health. And um, I love to, uh, I got this from my mom. She's been, as long as I can remember, my mom has been a big um, workout fanatic and I think it rubbed off on me. So, I, you know, usually I'm always finding a way to try to fit that in. It was harder as, you know, children and stuff like that. But, yeah. you know, I'm really into it. It doesn't take a lot to um, get me to be active. And so um, that's me. I don't know what else to say. <laughs> a lot more will come out as we talk. <laughs> yes, 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 yes. So when you're just, you know, a little side question, when you say that you love being active, are you, do you like put videos on Instagram? Like, do you do anything except for like doing it for yourself? Is that yeah, oh, no. Yeah, I do not put videos okay. on Instagram. <laughs> <laughs> I just I have to ask because you don't know these days. We're in a digital world. <laughs> right. No, I do um engage with um, a bunch of folks on YouTube in terms of yoga, in terms of um hit workouts, um oh my strength goodness. training. So I I am, you know, that's the way that I'm online, incorporating okay. being online with my workouts is that you know that makes it easy for me to do it at home at my convenience. I don't have to worry about paying a monthly fee or anything to a gym. <laughs> um, you know, I'm pretty internally motivated, so I don't need a personal trainer. Um, but yeah, no, I haven't I haven't shared myself with the world in that way. <laughs> Okay. Well, maybe one day I'll be able to get you to share your world, at least with me and inequality, because, you know, it's Heart Month, American Heart Month. So I've kind of been focused on that and sharing things about that. And then I decided I'm trying to get through this whole process of, you know, my journey to become a healthier me and not so much thinking about the number on the scale, but just every right. day waking up and choosing to be healthy in what I eat and what I do. And right. so I this group on the, on our Facebook page, but I'm just waiting to put it out there to bring people in and we just support each other, blah, 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 but we'll have that conversation later. Okay. Uh, yeah, we do have to have a conversation because I have a friend who does, she does a Zoom um, get together of some ladies doing Zumba and we just encourage each other that way. So yeah. yeah. Now I do crazy berry town too. Now Yo, Every yes. once in a while I get the Zumba to Zion, but sometimes <laughs> I can't like stop in the middle of my work day and I just hate it so much that I can't, right. that I can't join her. But yes, yeah, she's definitely in my, in the mix of me, you know, getting to be healthier as well. Love it. <laughs> All right. So Mr. C sharp, <laughs> Tell us so, about yourself. Give us your background, and then um, something that we wouldn't have learned in the book. I'm, I'm also from the DC area. I mean, well, the the DMV. We actually went to uh, rival high schools. Didn't know each other, but we went to rival high schools. Um, we went to college together, undergrad and graduate school. Now, graduate school was easy because we were married, but undergrad was just <laughs> totally by accident. Um, <laughs> Uh, I am also the eldest brother of three. So I have two younger brothers. Um, and let's see, something you don't know about me. I did not start DJing until I was about 41, 42 years old. Okay. You're good. I just, mm -hmm. I just make, I make decisions and I say, let's do it. And then, you know, and then we just do it. So it just yeah. kind of happens. And I think I've always loved music. I always had a, a, a very robust music collection. Yeah. But presenting it to other people is, is, is a different skill and a different thing. So. Yes, it is. It is. And what you guys do to me is just amazing. I, I I was a radio DJ, which I think is much different than like a real DJ. I, 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 <laughs> Sorry, we, had, we had a conversation about that not uh, a while back, but I said, Originally, yeah, it's yeah. a radio DJ is a much different thing. Much different, much different. But I still enjoyed playing the music and 
I, I played for a local radio station in Minneapolis called KMOJ and Prince really kind of made that radio station famous, of course. But uh, we, that was the day. Cause you know, I'm, I'm probably a little older than you. We take the, we take the, the crates, digging the crates and we, I'm, that's how it was. And it wasn't like pushing a button the way it is on the radio anymore. Everything's kind of pre-programmed for you, but I love just going in and just feeling the, feeling the, the groove and just playing whatever. Came nice. Up, so. That's you're what I love. That's a part of your background. I, I think you're older. Than, I don't think you're older than me. <laughs> well, that's I, what I love about like when I found Twitch through um Vader, like it the the rhythm just moves me, and so I love I love you guys, and so anyways, let's let's ch jump into the book. Time to talk about the book. Let me ask this: How did you decide? the order of the chapters like before we dive in because believe you me i have been reading making notes highlighting <laughs> i got some stuff to ask <laughs> okay 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 but before we jump into that i want to know how did you decide the order of the book oh and by the way this is the book that we're talking about today all right in the chat in the comments you will find links to order it, Google Play, iMusic, Amazon, and Barnes and Noble. They're all different kinds of ways. And there's probably more ways now <laughs> to get this book. So, but how did you decide the order of the chapters? Uh, we just, basically, that was more like what fit as we were reading and editing um because they weren't they're not written in that because they're written as individual chapters then, yeah they're kind of like little articles oh, yeah so we just started looking at them and, and trying to figure out how to take the reader on a solid journey through our thoughts thoughts <laughs> you know we didn't want to start out here and then shift you all the way over here so we, our goal uh, you know and i hope that we achieved it but our goal was just to kind of make it a cohesive thread of our thoughts through uh through the book i i think it i think you did a very good job doing that i okay. felt like i went through the journey with you guys um starting from you know when you met in college and how you traveled like we're going to get into all that because i want to know like for people who might be listening that are just in the beginning of a relationship and maybe the two don't have kids and they, and they're young and they have the opportunity to do it differently when they get started. I want you guys to talk about that. But before we do that, how did you, how did you decide which chapter was whose? Like, I know the, the process cause I read the book. You just kind of all, you kind of did your own little brainstorming and you kind of matched everything up and what you both agreed on was really easy to decide, but how did you decide then who was going to write which chapter or which article? Whoever's idea it was from the beginning for that topic, that's who wrote it. Okay. Because you just brought, you know, apparently you had a something to say about it because <laughs> it, it came to mind when we asked ourselves, what have we learned in 25 years? Um, so it just seemed to fit that you would be the person to, to write it. And then the other person also edited too and could make suggestions and add, um, add to it um in in a in a you know minor ways um so yeah yeah the goal just was in the editing not to change the other person's voice mm -hmm. they we wanted that person if you had those thoughts we wanted your thoughts to uh, her thoughts if she had her thoughts i wanted her thoughts to come through and vice versa yeah so you know you read it and sometimes it stings a little bit <laughs> When you're reading it especially when it was raw like just the raw like i'm just gonna write my thoughts down and then we shared it with each other it's like e <laughs> are we going that deep <laughs> but if it's what she felt then you know i thought it was disingenuous for me to try to change it to something that i felt if she felt this way you know we discussed it before the world got a chance to see it so we were able to work it out and then we are all, we, we, yeah. we present it to the world. Yeah. How, how close are you in age? I don't want you to tell me how old you are, but how close are you in age to each other? We're a couple of years apart. Two years. And who's older? Because I'm not going to assume. This guy. <laughs> he really did just point at me. <laughs> That's oh, what I'm no. like, uh. <laughs> it's me. I'm older. 
I'll, I'll ask my birthday's in April, so I'll be uh, I'll, I'll be growing up. I'll get another year in, in on the first of April. <laughs> April first. I have a really good friend that shares a birthday with you. All right. Oh. Yes. Must, very, must be a great great person. Yeah. He is. Ah. He is. His name is Troy Miller, and uh, he was someone that I met through my ex husband. They were best friends growing up, and so our kid, our sons have grown up together. My and okay. my son mm -hmm. will be thirty two in march 32 i think I, I think my mouth got stuck a little bit yeah that's a tough one to get stuck. <laughs> i can a, see how i can see how that's my baby i understand i understand you in no way you must have had him at 12 uh, girl, girl. we're if looking only. at the mother of a 32 year old right now <laughs> if only all right so now how long did it take for you guys to write the book i know it's the it was a culmination of 25 years to learn the lessons that you learned but like pen to paper beginning to end how long did it take you i would say we started in I, so we started in phases because i started first <laughs> because once we decided we were going to do it i i sat down and i just started writing chapter after chapter after chapter that was dedicated to me and then she i finally i finally got into a groove she, it took it took me a lot longer yeah. to say yeah i can actually do this and i have something that is worth printing to say um and that even though i would have not called myself a writer before this um you know i had to kind of process that like what is a writer and how does that apply to me and so it took me a little while, which is very typical of our relationship. Like he's he's a little quicker to process, a little quicker to jump in. Where I'm like, wait a minute, let's look at it from this angle first. And oh, well, what about this? And what if this happens? So yeah, Just... I did that with this. So and and so I guess you know I I want to say it was late uh, late late uh, summer of our 25th year when you started september september, yeah, of, september. Sep, yep september then she came in and got herself going mid-october mm -hmm. mid and by by june by the end of june we had sent it off to print the very the next june yeah, yeah. awesome so less than a year that's awesome. And and I read that author Javonda was very instrumental. She was like your writing coach in the yes. in this process. <laughs> yes. She I had to to um enlist her because you know, I needed I needed that push and I needed um that, you know, I don't know, extra validation that, you know, the the process may not look like what you think it's going to look like, but um we can do it together. <laughs> um, you know, and her having, you know, authored books before and having those under her belt, she just, she scooped me in and she's like, okay, we're going to meet once a week. Um, and we did, we met That's once awesome. a week and we didn't even have much conversation. It was like, Hey, how's the writing going? What's your thoughts on, what are your thoughts like? And okay. then we were, um, we were, uh, what's the word? writing for the rest of the time we just turn okay. on a timer and crank it out because she was writing she her third book <laughs> yes. at the same time yeah hey chicken wing Dooney. <laughs> it's so good to see you welcome in welcome in i'm sure you already know who it is that we're speaking with today I <laughs> I just want to remind everyone that this is the Inequality Podcast. I am your host, Tawana. And we have this wonderful, wonderful, beautiful, like I we met, of course, like everyone else on Twitch in this digital world, unreality, <laughs> kind of, right? In right. the space where we made real connections. And you, everyone else has been involved with this way longer than me like i i see like 25 months 26 month subscriptions and i'm like hmm i'm just gonna keep my little nine months to myself i'm still no you. <laughs> no, no. no. every every bit counts no matter where you came in you're still family you gotta start everybody gotta start somewhere yes. everybody has to start somewhere <laughs> It's so like you guys have my heart and so when we met it at the ohio meetup last year i Correct. was i was just I think I think I was eavesdropping because I, I learned that from my mama. 
<laughs> and didn't realize that you guys had had a book and you had sold, you know, were, you know, bringing people who had ordered it. And I saw that book and right away I'm like, Black love, I am like one of those perpetually single <laughs> people that am looking for wonderful people to look up to in this arena, like Chicken Wing Dooney. <laughs> We're here for the stir here the for soul the is in here. Yes. Hey, stir. Hey, <laughs> so we um the Ohio meetup was our benchmark. Um, what I mean by that is when we started actually writing the book and started putting I I'm really uh, a stickler for putting deadlines on things. We got to have go cuz how do you know if you're if you're uh, measure, meeting your goals if you don't put some deadlines on some things. So the Ohio meetup was the goal. I yes. said when we go to the Ohio meetup or when I and we were both supposed to go yeah. but when we go to the Ohio meetup at the time I want to be able to take 25 books with me and come and sell them because all the people who have been very encouraging of us and all the people who have been very supportive of us will be there. So this is a great opportunity to get it to them in their hands. Yeah. So that was always the, been the end goal. When we started writing, it said we'll have this ready to go in time to go and take it to the Ohio meetup. That's awesome. That so believe you me, when I started, I got I got the signed copy. <laughs> and I but I'm also a researcher and I have written in here and highlighted so I have to order another pristine signed copy. Uh oh. Ah. oh okay. <laughs> I want to keep, you know, I want to keep this one for the show. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So listen, I want to hear the story about rinsing the dishes. So uh, that had to be like the first thing that we talked about, seeing how that's how y'all kind of started us on that journey. <laughs> Let's talk about rinsing the dishes and you can decide which one of y'all is going to be the, the writer of the article and who's going to do the editing once you're done. <laughs> well, I, I was the writer of that article. Um, and it really is just an example of how we come to every task, um, every uh, challenge, obstacle, plan, thinking differently. And that just embodied how differently we think. Because, you know, I would, you know, we, and we, that is literally a discussion that we've had more than once. More than once. Where I'm like, why are you putting food if the food is still on the dish, do not put it in the dishwasher. We're not putting the food in the dishwasher. We're just putting the dish. You got to get that food off first. And his thing was, you know, why am I washing the dish before I put it in the dishwasher? And, you know, of course, I'm just like, that's not washing. That's just getting off the food particles. <laughs> Disco, welcome in. Disco, Darren, welcome in. Disco, Darren is hey, awesome. Hey, hey, my <laughs> God, my anyway, God. Make sure you put your links. I am not good at doing this yet. I always have to, I, I like to just apologize because I'm always so in to the interview that I, I'm, I'm not connecting. And this is the reason why we're doing this, right? To connect. So I'm working on doing that better. <laughs> All right. Okay. You, you, okay. And look at you. You remember. Put your links in the chat. Come put on, Disco. Come on, Chicken Wing Dooney. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I'm talking about I'll, I'll cook. Somebody else will go wash these dishes. Exactly. <laughs> and is that exactly. you don't care how they wash them? Just get them clean, right? How did you decide? Like, because I, you know, couples have all different ways. Like, and then you know, just to go back, how did you even learn to recognize that? Okay. We see things differently. And instead of arguing about it, we're going to figure out how to compromise and come up with a much easier way to do this. Like, did it take a whole lot of years? Or was it something that came easily for you guys? It, it, took, it took a lot of years. It took years. It took, years. It took a lot of it years. Took years. I mean, we're like, you know, we said we're both the eldest in our families, too. So we came with this kind of like, I'm the leader of the pack. 
Um, you, sir, don't know what you're talking about, or you, <laughs> ma'am, <laughs> need to go rethink your plan. Yes. Um, so yeah, it took a lot of years and a lot of arguments and a lot of discomfort and a lot of silent treatments and a it's, lot of yeah. you it's know, survival. Yeah. The survival was the survival of the relationship merited figuring out how so, to make it work because you know it wasn't going to go away it was going to rear its head these types of things were going to rear their head over and over and over again in yeah. different areas of our lives so if we were going to continue to be together we got to figure out some way to make this work so and we wanted to be together we do value each other's opinions and each other's perspectives um, and we both, you know, we think that I think I married a smart guy. He thinks he married a smart lady. So it's not like at any point we felt like this just this person is just not bringing anything to the table. So, right. so you do value what the other person has to bring. We just realized we needed that space from each other to um, each do our part. <laughs> Yeah, and then we could we could bring it together, and even you know the bringing it together. You know, there were arguments as we were bringing the book together. <laughs> there were times when it's like, okay, you know, let's you know let's let cooler heads prevail, kind of thing, or one person just had to walk away, or whatever the case. Yeah. Um, but you know, yeah, and look what we made. Absolutely, know, just doing that, doing <laughs> doing what what we do best. That's great. Hey, Classy <laughs> T, that's all right. You can lurk. But hey, thank you for coming in and, and spending your afternoon with us. And Sturge and Soul defies a plan. If you so want to Classy T been there from day one. Yes. I mean, I mean literally. I mean, literally from day one. Not oh. day one of the marriage. Day one of us even knowing, knowing each, each other. other. Yeah. That's, that's amazing. That's how long Classy T been around. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> that, I'm telling T you, I'm, I feel like I'm just going to have goosebumps this whole interview because... <laughs> I, I just, I'm, you guys give me goosebumps <laughs> all the time. Classy but, T has the distinction of being the only person to attend our wedding. Yes. Our elopement. Elopement. Yes, elopement. We eloped. Wait a minute. I read the book. So this, the, who is Classy T? Because I thought you guys eloped and there was no one there. Did I miss that well, part? Well, you, you're right. Classy T needed to be there because Yolanda was babysitting her sister and we needed somebody to watch her sister while we did this. So Classy T came with us to watch the sister while we got married. Oh my goodness. What a great my, story. My sister was only maybe eight or nine at, at most. I mean, she was still <laughs> sucking her thumb standing there <laughs> as if she had no idea what was going on. Oh my goodness. That's too funny. See, that was not in the book. See, it's I'm giving you all the extra. Book. I'm giving you a little extra everything. right here on inequality. <laughs> <laughs> right. Exclusive. Exclusive. Yeah. Flash that at the bottom of the there you go, there you go. Okay, so <laughs> I'm all about laughing here in the beginning of this interview because we're gonna get a little deeper later on. Sure. Um, but I need to, I just want you to share the story about the water. So let's just go back and, and tell people about, I just thought it was amazing that you guys were able to move to Europe and travel around for a year and, and go on vacations all the time. And, and I'm sure you were like Beyonce flying first class everywhere. Can you just talk a little bit about that time in your, that period so, in your marriage and, and some of the things that you learned, including the water story? So, <laughs> sure. so, it, so I wrote that chapter and, and essentially when we went, when we graduated from, from graduate school, I got a job in Switzerland uh, working for, uh, and uh, it, it, it sounds cliche, but I was working for a bank. Uh, I, I, it sounds cliche. In Switzerland. I was in Switzerland. working for a bank. Banks are so we need to become better friends. Is that what you're <laughs> telling me? And for a while, I even had a Swiss bank account. So I don't have it anymore, but for a while, we even had a Swiss bank account. So um, the plan was to go find us a country that, that in Europe that we could that we could stay in and then, we didn't speak any other languages so we needed some place where they spoke English and sense. then travel from there on the weekends to other countries because you know the rail system the, the European rail system is far and away better than the the US rail system yes mostly because it's been destroyed twice but 
they've had the chance to rebuild it a couple of times. So that's probably why. But so that's what we did. And we went to Nice, um, Tunisia, which is the one you're talking about. We yeah, went to water. We went to <laughs> Munich. We went to Paris. We, we went to uh, Saint oh Tropez. God. We went to several places in in, in Switzerland, uh, Lucerne, Interlaken, Lugano, <laughs> Bellinzona. Wow. So just you know, we went to Rome. We went to uh, Venice. Venice. So we went to, you know, so that's how our weekends were. She would meet me at the train station when I got off work and we would just go, you know, and and it was a a wonderful experience for us (laughs) to be able to see how other people lived and how, you know, how other cultures were and, you know, lots of places where they didn't speak any English and you still are able to make it work it out. Absolutely. That's so awesome. Um, do you think that um, it helped you gain a different perspective of United States being able to do that? Absolutely. Absolutely. You realize how young the United States is? It's a super <laughs> young country. You know, these places have centuries of history. Um, and you realize that the world is just bigger that, and that, you know, excuse me for all my, my super Patriot friends out there, but (laughs) the United States is not, you know, the end all be all of how to live. Um, Just, you know, going a little bit political for a second. I was pregnant when we were living in Switzerland and I had two sonograms while there and they never asked me for a dime, a card, a, a employer's yeah. name, anything. We just came in, said, I'm not feeling well. I'm this far along. These are my symptoms. And they just took care of me. I never received, we never received one we bill. We thought we would get a bill. We kept expecting <laughs> a bill. There was no, never no bill. a bill. No bill. Um, and, you know, so uh, that was... That was pretty awesome was pretty <laughs> to awesome. be able to do that and get that care and not have to worry. Um, so and I, I think, think like that everywhere, but here, yeah, everywhere, right. right. lots of places, right? <laughs> and one of the things that spoiled us that 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 bring us back to the chapter that you're talking about in the book was Switzerland is ninety percent hydroelectric. Wow. So you know they. I'm sorry, it's not ninety percent. It's one hundred percent. They got some other things, but 90% of their energy comes from hydroelectric to the point where they give they give energy to other countries because they build um, turbines on the side of mountains so that when the snow melts from the Alps, turns the turbines and provides them electricity. So I say that to say that every water source that you see in Switzerland is drinkable. So when you are walking through the park and it's just a fountain, you can stick your cup in there and drink that water. Wow. And that's, you know, I, I grew up in D.C. where you can't even. <laughs> you, you don't want to stick You don't stick nothing in the water that you get in, in, in them parks. Mm-mm. Mm-mm. Don't want to drink from the actual water fountain. <laughs> <laughs> so, I mean, we, we really could go on and on uh, about the differences in terms of how far ahead they were in recycling and packaging of their food, how fresh the food was. There's not, you know, (laughs) we bought um, a a pound of ground beef and it was pure red, you know, the the fat content so low. We had to Um, add oil to it. To the pan to even (laughs) keep it from sticking to the pan. Um, you know, and that's crazy. Even the McDonald's was healthier than <laughs> the McDonald's here. The McDonald's Healthy was McDonald's? It, it, what? It was it was, it was good. <laughs> I mean, it's so wow. good. The McDonald's was so good that when we came home, I went to McDonald's and had a hamburger and was like, This is the worst thing I've ever it, tasted. And I have not had a McDonald's hamburger since, since we got back from Switzerland in 2000. 2000. 
<laughs> wow. I, it's been a long time since I've had a McDonald's hamburger. I think it was after that guy did the documentary when he just ate right. McDonald's. I and think that was really sick. Yeah. yeah, that was that was yeah. it. For me. Those yeah. were American McDonald's. I can Those tell you that. Have, <laughs> he may have had he may have still gotten sick eventually because you know fast food and junk food is not good for you, but um yes. not this i mean there's no such thing as this grain d meat that they allow and you know the french fry that never goes bad you can find a french fry in your car you know years later it still looks exactly like <laughs> girl we can talk about that yes. very impressive yeah we're gonna have to have that conversation during right. women's, women's uh health month but right because <laughs> man i don't i yeah, whole nother conversation. Right. But yeah, so okay. to, walk, to get to the water, we were, you know, we they they drink things at room temperature. They don't re really refrigerate their drinks, sodas or anything. Um, they drink almost everything room temperature. And so we have been asking for ice so many places where we were eating, and they would come back with a couple of cubes. And finally, we go to Tunisia to this um, all-inclusive resort with you know food galore everywhere and we remembered not to drink the water but we didn't remember not to get ice in our drinks because they had <laughs> buckets of ice and we're like oh my god we can have ice cold drinks <laughs> like god intended god did not intend god intended for them drinks to be ice cold <laughs> he did not intend for us to have ice cold drinks in tunisia because not in tunisia right yes we paid for it, we we paid paid for it big later. time big time <laughs> Man, that's what they always say about the water in Mexico. I, I, I just never do it. But Man. I feel the same way about the water in Kissimmee, Florida. Like, have you <laughs> been to Kissimmee? And like the water, it just smells. <laughs> you gotta have the, you know, a gallon of water just to brush your teeth just down there. Teeth. <laughs> so that was a whole experience of yes. something that we learned that, that ice is, is water. water. Hello, ice <laughs> is water. I just love every aspect of your journey of learning together. This is amazing. <clears throat> now, I, I want to make sure that we get your words, but I do want to read this um, part of My Little Love, track four. Oh, yeah. This was like the beginning of this was just amazing. So <laughs> parenting is easy. It <laughs> said no actual parent ever. Am I right? <laughs> we haven't even mastered the marriage relationship yet. And we go and bring new people into the mix. People who totally depend on us and spend half the time thinking they know better than us. We make these brand new humans and it's our job to raise them to adulthood. But there is no advanced training for the particular individuals that we are dealing with. It's all learn as you go and trial and error. We also want to still recognize ourselves once our kids have become adults. Man, we're going to really talk about this chapter. <laughs> How do we parent effectively while still retaining the sense of ourselves that we become accustomed to? And we don't even think about that as parents. We just automatically, we're just, our lives are not ours anymore. Right, right. That's it. That, yeah, that's I mean, the that's the first thought that you have as a parent, um, you know, is once you become the parent going into it you think uh, differently like oh you know i got this i got kids you know i've had siblings i've been around kids i'm an auntie or whatever the things <laughs> you think <laughs> until they come home and they run your complete life from day one from day one she was getting us up out of bed earlier than we ever <laughs> <laughs> you know she's waking us up in the middle of the night she's you know She's demanding food, demanding to be changed, <laughs> demanding attention. Dem at the door, demanding right, right she now. She comes right now. <laughs> right on. It does not you. stop. She's it like, never did stopped. someone talk? Did someone bring me up? <laughs> did you call? Hi. We, we got locked the door. She locked you. out. She locked out. We're not bringing her in here. We're not letting her in here. <laughs> But I'm sure she gets really tired of, you know, these interviews where you got to bring up raising kids and <laughs> she's probably like, man, can we just leave me out of the conversation? <laughs> a friend of mine, I had lunch with a friend of mine yesterday. A fr one of my friends is having a baby. We had a baby shower for her yesterday for lunch. And another guy said the scariest moment for him as a parent was the day he walked out of that hospital with that child for the first time. And they were like, okay, see, see you later. later. They're like, uh, I'm going to need an 
escort. I'm going to need a supervisor. Right. I'm going to need a plan of what to do. Nothing. Like, the nothing. You just walk out and you're supposed to take care of this know, child. Uh, you know, someone who's completely dependent on you for their yes. very life. Yes. And I was a young mother. I don't know. <clears throat> I was 18 when I had my daughter. <clears throat> and I really feel like she saved my life. Oh, you know, wow. and, and I know kids probably don't like that kind of pressure, but she saved my she saved my life. I don't know where I would be today <laughs> wow. had I not had her to say, you know what? There's another reason for you to be here. There's another yeah. reason. For, here's another yeah. reason for you to be here. And so, and I and my mom was a young mom. My parents got married at 16 and 19. So wow. everything that I learned from relationships, you know, with me or with my parents was what not to do. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. So I feel like yeah. that's what you, you either know what not to do or you're going to do just what your parents did because you just loved how they raised you. Right. How did you guys? Or because you can't, you sometimes you want to change things and you don't know how to. Yeah. And you end up doing some of, repeating some of those same mistakes for that reason. It's just like, yeah. I just don't know any differently. I don't know, you know, even if you were uncomfortable and you saw that it wasn't the best thing, sometimes it's just easy to slip into those old, those patterns. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. So, who? Yeah. Which? So, remind me again. Who wrote that chapter? I wrote that chapter. Okay. My little love. It's my favorite chapter. It's one of my favorite chapters in the whole book. Because so, at this point, I'm sure people will learn this, but every chapter is associated with a real song, and this song was a is a actually 2020 K22 came, came out last year. And we heard that song and I immediately knew that that song would be the title of this <laughs> chapter. Um, because the, you know, the whole point of the, of the song and the whole point of the chapter is that, you, that you really are apologetic to your children because they don't realize that you don't really know what the hell you're, you're doing figuring this out as you go along. And, you're sad for the mistakes that you make and the, the 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 impact those mistakes have on their lives and you know those are just things that you always as a parent hold on to and you say man i, I wish i had done this I, I wish i had done this once you grow a little and learn more and get better at it but it, that was the, the the tenor of that chapter is under is just recognizing that we're fallible and we're going to make some mistakes with our kids and that we, we just, just hope it doesn't have to make too much damage. <laughs> right. Yeah. yeah. I find myself apologizing mm -hmm. to my kids every once in a while. Like I, you know, I, I always think about, Oh, I could have done that. Right. Or why didn't I think of that? You know, cause I'm a grandmother. Right. And so that really changes your perspective on life mm -hmm. because then okay. you're just, you're not in the moment. You're always in the moment when you're a parent. You got it, everything has to be done. <laughs> but right. when you're right. a grandparent, you get to sit back and say, "Hmm, now you know it's your do-over, kid." But it's not yours, and your kids are like, "Uh-uh, this is my kid." And then <laughs> you <start> the <laughs> <laughs> We're and not there yet. Attention, but I'm just trying to make it right with you. <laughs> we'll, we'll call you when we get there. We're right. not there yet, but we'll we can, call you. We can commiserate with you then. I see Chicken Wing Dooney is saying his kids found out real quick. <laughs> That's when they find out, when they become parents. Yes. Right? Right. Yes. And um, we're so thankful because our, uh, our son has gone away to college now. And, you know, he's in his freshman year and he actually still reaches out to us. You know, we were thinking he was just going <laughs> to drop off the face of the earth and we were going to have to be searching for him up and down. But no, he's still, you know, very much connected with us and still, you know, asking us for advice. Awesome. <laughs> so it's like, <laughs> OK, you really did respect what we had to say and. You know, you want you want to know more about you know what we think that you should do. So that that's that's a nice you know circle that we looped looped close in, in a sense. I'm <laughs> sure there's more. There's more, but <laughs> it's rewarding. Oh. And now listen, I'm getting ready to. <clears throat> I'm gonna kind of breeze through a few of the other chapters uh -huh. I wanted to step wanted to talk about, but in chapter five. 
Yolanda. Uh huh. Tonight is right. <laughs> <laughs> what stood out to me the most was the subconscious guilt. Like the, just even as a mother, as a one, like of all of those things, the subconscious guilt that we, and th when you put it in those two little simple words, it was like, wow, <laughs> wow, wow, wow. And then I really appreciated Clarence, how you said that <clears throat> you want to love on your wife through the whole day. Cause this is all about once you're a parent and there's no time for each other. And you know, how do you make sure that you keep everything fresh and, but you know, Hey, you just have to make sure that if, if your intentions is honey tonight, <laughs> you better honey this morning and honey all day, honey, all day, honey, all day. Absolutely. So just talk, talk about those two things. I gave you kind of both two things to talk about. So I'll let you go first. You let me go first. Um, so yeah, it's it it is there is that tug and pull on you um that can make you forget that you're a woman in more ways than being a mother or you know than being you know a a caretaker of a home or you know a, an employee da, da 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 there's so many things pulling on you and taking away from that part of you um that yes you you know you can disconnect without even realizing you're disconnecting and you start to move into you know more of a you there's the danger of moving into more of a roommate mode as opposed to we're husband and wife um and we got to preserve this um re, you know regardless and that sex is is an important part of that it's not um something that you can just leave, you know, let go when, when you're stressed or, you know, let go because you, you know, you had a series of bad days or things aren't working out like you wanted to. It's, a, it's an important way to connect and stay connected. Um, yes. So that was yes. kind of my perspective on what I had to re remind myself and raise the priority and raise the yes. importance of yes. that physical intimacy and that physical connection. Yes. Um, and that was a little bit later in the book, but I love yes. how it kind of tied yes. back to that because, yes. you know, <clears throat> and, and I was married. I, I married really young and divorced really, really young. And honestly, my, my ex-husband and I, probably never should have gotten married, but I appreciate the lessons that I've learned <clears throat> and I've never been married since. But I feel like when you hear about marriages after you do become roommates. And so I feel like the advice that you guys gave, especially the advice of prioritizing it and, you know, switching your perspective about it and the connection <laughs> that you have and how that's how you get your men to do what you want. No, just kidding. <laughs> You read between the lines. <laughs> Don't give away too much. <laughs> but yes, yes. So um, I I don't want to jump away while we're in the middle of talking about this. I can hand it over to C Sharp. I'm going to just check on our, our diva princess. She's okay. <laughs> needing our attention. So okay. I'll be right back. But I'll answer questions now. I'm taking all questions from the audience now. Okay. Um, and be careful. Just, just this, make some notes. You're getting the truth this, now. The truth, <laughs> the truth can be told if, now. If it sounds a little off, make a note and I'll correct it when I come back. Okay. I have pen and paper. So yeah. I, have, I will do that. Yeah. Okay. All right. All right. So the chapter that you're talking about tonight is right. Where we deal with whether, you know, basically we deal with something that I learned that I didn't know at, at, at when we got married, which was, you know, I, I figured we get married and the easiest part of being married was the fact that you sleeping together every night. And I'm not right. talking exactly sex, but the fact yeah. that you are in proximity with this person every night should make that very easy. And it turned out not to be the case. And, you know, as, um, as a man or you know i i won't speak for all men i don't like to generalize that way yeah. i can just speak for myself yes. and how it made me feel and it, it makes you feel like she don't want you and if she don't want you why are we here you know right. you know we i didn't want a roommate 
as she said right. before, I, you know, I wanted a wife. And it, what we learned over time was it was a great reset. It was a great way to wash away the worries of the day. And so for me, in order to get her to that point where that was OK and where she was in that place, I had to. The, the analogy I've used is crank her up like an old diesel. I got to just. <laughs> I gotta turn We're that not jack in the box. When you're trying to start saying crazy, I, I, need, jack in the box. I, I need her to go. I don't need her to pop up real quick. I need her to go. <laughs> so oh I Lord, Clarence. You know, I, need, I got to turn that crank like you know the old cars, the old model T's that you gotta get out the front and <laughs> work that thing going. And then once she, she she's gone, then it, it makes it better for everyone. So awesome. um so I, I give advice and that's my advice that I give to to especially newly married couples that, that, you know, that first year or so when you are hot and heavy and burning hot and heavy, then that that's good. But it don't it don't last. Um, it don't <laughs> last. It's cracking me up. I'm sorry. <laughs> he said, well, OK, now it's all about the men. So let's go. Well, the honeymoon phase is always like that. But after some years now, we we get to make it interesting. <clears throat> Baby, get the Lauren cloth. <laughs> I feel like Tarzan. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. Chicken wing is, 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 is looks like he is well versed in this area and got this under control. Yes. His, him and his wife, they do. You know, she makes appearances on his stream sometimes, too. So they're very they're very funny to to, to watch. And <clears throat> if you haven't uh, been to Chicken Wing Dooney's uh, site, he's really big on men's mental black men's mental health specifically. And I, I love, love you know, the way that he <clears throat> um, gives his wife so much credit in the man that he has become and the husband that he's become and the father that he's become. I love Chicken Wing Dooney is a just a awesome young man. If you're not, if you don't go by and visit his 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 stream, you, you must go do that. Well, <laughs> All I, right. I, I just followed him, yeah. so I'll make sure that I check him out. I, I just follow him, so I'll make sure I check him out. Yes, <laughs> yes. Just <clears throat> there are some amazing people on Twitch for real. So okay. <laughs> so you just don't learn that. The Yolanda, point was you just don't learn up. that. Your parents don't teach you. You don't really, they don't really talk to you about it. You know, we we grew up in the in the in the seventies and eighties, and you know those types of conversations with your parents were just not had. So you know it may be a little bit freer now. We're trying to have some some conversations with our son, um, but you know our conversations with him tend to be more practical. Tend to be protect yourself. Tend to be you know don't get yourself in this situation. Tend to be you know a little less, a little more. I don't want to say dumbed down, but a little more vanilla that's probably a and not the details because i'm not sure how much of the details he can grasp at 15 16 17 it it, it, it won't stick so but these were just some details but he's read the book so he he <laughs> he he's heard it now uh or at least in, he's he's read it <laughs> that's good that's good i <clears throat> i have one daughter and one son as well and Raising them is just, it's a very different, you know, I was ch always tried to raise my daughter to not be, don't be a teenage mom like me, you know, just trying to break that cycle of teenage motherhood within the women and, you know, just my daughter. And then within my son, like just whatever you do, Akeem, don't be that man in a, in a woman's life. Don't feel like you need to break her, you know, just don't be that man in right. a woman's life. <laughs> and so to me, that just, uh, that was all I thought about. Sorry. <laughs> and so, yeah. Yeah. And, and my son's pretty awesome too, but <laughs> <laughs> he's like, I'm not that man. Don't worry. Don't that, worry, mom. <laughs> um, you taught me more than you know. Uh, let's see. Uh, JC in the way ministries Hi. asked how old is our son? Today yes, he good. is, he will be 19 in May. Yes. So he's a freshman in college. He'll be 19 in May. Yes. Yes. Disco Darren, I, my son just got engaged and his fiance is the only girlfriend uh, that I ever met. The only one. <laughs> okay. Interesting. 
Yeah. And I like her. Oh, <laughs> I, I feel like she's just the best thing that, you know, has ever happened to my son. I but I also that. believe that my son's the best thing that's ever happened to her. There so <laughs> they're, they're, they're a great good. match. Yes, 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 yes. <laughs> okay. So let's skip ahead a little bit. One of the things that I started to recognize, JC in the way. Hi, that's my auntie. <laughs> hi, auntie. Hi, auntie. <laughs> Thank you for coming and joining us. <laughs> Okay, so what I did notice and and understanding that you guys were both raised in the church, very, you know, spiritual people. She was I, raised I, in the church. Just her? I was not. You she were not. She was raised in the church. Okay. I'm a preacher's kid. My dad was my dad. I'm, 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 I'm I was the PK. Not. I'm the PK. I'm, I, my parents went to church, but I would never consider myself as being raised in the church. <laughs> never, ever, 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 ever. <laughs> Don't say it so strongly. My parents, my parents flipped. Here, here my, you go. Here's a funny story. We were asked. She asked me who about a gospel artist, and my first gospel artist to her was who? Al Green. He he named Al Green. <laughs> Al Green. That's who you you, you can hear her. The Clark sisters, the Winans, Shirley Caesar. He said Al Green. <laughs> I said, wow. Okay. okay, I think he has like, I think he might have one gospel album. He was the Reverend was the Al Reverend Green. Al what you talking about? He was the Reverend Al he, Green. He, he is. So I have to give that to you a little bit. However, <laughs> he was more, more known for love and happiness, especially back in them days. <laughs> <laughs> Disco Darren, yes. Mama Disco is very hard on my lady. Yes, <laughs> very they, as she should be, because we we hold the standard. <clears throat> I you know I have a lot of different opinions, and and this is a show about inequality, and we haven't really talked so much about that yet. But I always felt like you know you pretty much know the kind of mom a man has by the the women he <laughs> the women he has. Whether that woman is absent, you know, because she had to work two jobs. Like there are so many reasons, you know, you're when you're a black mom and a head of a household, there's so many reasons why you can be disconnected from your kids. But mm -hmm. <clears throat> I just always felt like that was a good indication about the relationship that that man has with his woman mm -hmm. or his mom, the kind of women that he has. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But I, I did notice towards the end of the book, your your articles, I keep calling them chapters, but they were more grounded and rooted in God and your faith. Both of you. Do you do you think, Clarence, that your faith got stronger because of Yolanda? Is it Absolutely. stronger? It, there's no doubt in my there's no doubt in my mind. Um, one of the stories we didn't tell is just when we got engaged. Now, um, let me give you from my perspective. I'll let her jump in with in hers anytime. But when we got engaged, prior to that, we had practically lived together for a good, uh, just the better part of two and a half years. So when we get engaged and she says, I'm not sure if I can marry you because you don't really go to church and you don't, we're, we're not equally yoked. At, and I'm thinking to myself, for two and a half years, we've been pretty yoked up. I mean, I'm not sure. <laughs> What has changed now? <laughs> so but her point was, if you were going to be my forever, then then the standard that I have to hold you to was a bit different than if you were just going to be the guy who lived downstairs yeah. or, you know, so, or the guy who I was even staying with in my younger days and years. Right. Yeah. So marriage to me is a different animal. Different. Marriage Absolutely. is about, you know, staying together forever. And having been, having grown up in the church, right. I had seen that it was hard enough to stay married when both of you do are believers and do have, you know, do make your decisions rooted in, in a, in an agreed upon faith. Um, so it's already hard enough without that, yeah. with that. <clears throat> and then to think for me to think that we would, you know, start yeah. to have kids and raise them, you know, where were, were we going to make them go to church, you know, on Sundays or a mosque or, well, you know, what are we going to do? <laughs> yeah. Um, so, yeah, I had put the, put the pressure on him when he, you know, about the time he was starting to think he might propose and we were talking about forever, like, okay, well, if we're talking about forever, some things have got to change. Yeah. So we, you know, we went through that, that phase, 
I did my own personal exploration, you know, you I, did. without her because she was away. So it was easy. She was 325 miles away. So it was really easy for me to do my own exploration, try to come to my own conclusions, try to come to my own decisions and move forward from there. But, the, you know, the, the, the short answer is yes. You know, she's absolutely instrumental in in my movement of faith and where I've gotten to and where especially when we're talking about those chapters in those books yeah. uh, where we were at that time yeah i think that's you know uh, i tease myself a lot about the fact that i'm still single you know i i've not had successful relationships even my marriage was not successful <clears throat> and i know people who's been able to be married three four times like how do you find three four husbands <laughs> I don't understand. We well, know. You know, I, we'll have to talk about that later too. Yeah, no. <laughs> <laughs> but what I what I am very clear on now is that God had to prepare me first, right? Yeah. Like I've kind of lived through life, want to kind of wander through life, <clears throat> learning as I go, and and very happy with the life I've led, but has not until re very recently put God in total control of my life. And I think that, you know, as a woman, once we do that, we can see and recognize that in the man that we, you know, that we've got our eye on because submission is a real thing. And it's OK to be submissive to your husband, especially when you know that he's leading you in the right direction and he's had le being led by God himself. So mm -hmm. that's when as I was reading the book, that's how, kind of how I noticed the trend was you were saying how your journey has been and how at the end of the book, you seem to really point out the the faith and how your faith in God impacts your marriage. Yeah, it's it's been a real journey um, because, you know, we had to, it, it's been an individual journey. You know, even though I grew up in the church, you know, I can look back at that time and say, you know, I learned some facts about, you know, I, about what the Bible says. And I learned some scriptures. I had some things memorized and, you know, I had some rules, quote unquote, that applied <laughs> in my life or that I was, I was bucking against. Um, but having a real relationship with God, I didn't have that. So I was just as new as him. Like I may have known the churchy phrases to use and right. I may have, you know, I may have already shouted around the church and knew how to play the tambourine or whatever. Oh but, yes, yes, yes. We got it all. We know that we, <laughs> we, we were both young in learning how to have a relationship and, um, you know, and our, our relationship with God has, gone through so much even as who we are going through so much yeah. you know with each other and with our children um so it's it's been you know an evolution and it's been trying and it's been you know heartbreaking and disappointing and then you know um Trump, some some triumphs, some triumphs as well um so it's it's that is an ongoing part of our relationship it really is you know, I don't, I don't nearly feel as, as um, strongly about some of the things that I held onto before that I do now. Am I glad that yes, we have that common base that we can speak to each other from. And, you know, we both know about prayer and believe in prayer and things like that. Um, uh, but you know, it has evolved based on, you know, actual experience. So yeah, it, it, that could be another book in of itself, really. It's just y'all yes. definitely got a few more books. And like I said, I'm, I'm waiting for the the accompaniment, like, you know, for young <laughs> for young people out here that read this book and you know what we need we need a workbook to work through some of these things yeah. how how are we going to recognize first you got to learn yourself know yourself right how are we going right. to recognize this about ourselves and how are we going to work better with each other who's going to cut the who's going to cut the potatoes for the potato salad and then who's going to add everything else <laughs> like how do, how do you learn those roles so i'm expecting a workbook <laughs> You are not like the it. first person to say that. The pressure is on a workbook. Oh my! That's 
hey, that's what um that's what Michelle Obama did with becoming. I actually have yeah. the journal, the workbook to yeah. kind of work through, you know, my life because you some things you don't even like think to think about until someone yeah. asks you, like, hmm, all right, let's let's think about that. So you guys, you guys give a lot to think about in here. So I want to do something different because I, I want to bring in some recent news um, okay. things that I've found to kind of guide the conversation a little bit more. Now, <clears throat> I don't know if you guys were in the the screening of I am or uh, the life of an alpha male disco Darren. Uh, I was you, working, but yeah, I heard it was we good. Had to miss it. <laughs> I was working. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, so this it was uh, so. I had kind of missed a little bit of the beginning. And so I wasn't really in tune to the whole thing the first time, but I went back and watched it, like really paid attention before they had, you know, the, the cast on the next day. <laughs> but I just think it's funny because I'm, I consider myself a young person, but I have to realize that my kids are in their thirties. And, and so these, <laughs> these kids think a little bit differently. So the whole yes. idea of an alpha male to me was hilarious especially <laughs> like what is an alpha male disco darren <laughs> i'm pretty sure disco darren puts himself in that category oh yeah. yes are you kidding that was all that that was his uh documentary if you just <laughs> i'm pretty sure he does <laughs> i'm pretty sure he does but i found this article let me share my screen with you so okay. just in in the news today let me see. Cause you know, I've been working on all these little things and I'm trying to use a little bit. And so let's see if I can figure out while I'm sharing my screen with you guys. So in the news, we're going to share the screen about. Yep. We see it. <laughs> Hold on a second. I, that's not what I want. Chrome tab. <laughs> Reality of a black man. There you go. There's now, some really sure good stuff in the see? chat. Oh my God. <laughs> <Let> me... <laughs> Okay, All right, we got to zoom in. Let me see. Let me figure out by how I zoom in. Let me see. Let me see. Let me see. Well, you guys are making me work. How do I how do I zoom in here? Zoom, zoom, zoom. I might have to look at it. Is it closer. getting better? You know, I we we have our screen pretty far away from us in the room, okay. just the way we have the room set up. So I'm bringing Hold you on up on Let's my see. phone. How about that? So okay. How about that? Oh yeah, that's 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 great. Is that better? Yes. Yeah, that's why I'm okay. in charge of production. Yeah. That's why I'm in charge <laughs> of production. Just click a few buttons and bam. All right. All right. So, so listen, there's this part. And again, just stuff that stood out to me. So as a graduate student, and as you can see, the title of this is The Reality of Black Men's Love, Lives, and Marriages. Very different than what's usually shown on TV. <clears throat> and he spent years actually talking to him. So this is kind of what he's come up with. So as a graduate student at and a university professor, he spent nearly two decades reviewing the studies of black men and families. And the general consensus from them falls into one of two categories. First, that many black men are not viable marriage mates because their financial struggles will not allow them pro to provide for a wife and children. <clears throat> and other studies conclude that many poor black men reject monogamous romantic relationships in favor of a hypersexual masculinity to overcompensate for their inability to fulfill the traditional breadwinner role. These oh. Men, the studies conclude, treat women as conquests rather than partners. And so I thought that was a very interesting take on. And, and later on, he also says that these um, studies always seem to only include poor black men. Mm -hmm. But uh, but I wondered, Cla Clarence, because this is what I want to ask you, <clears throat> because I know I'm surrounded by many successful black couples, right? been together for many years, raised kids, sending them off to college. Now, um, so once you, what do you have to say about the perception of black men in marriage? And then what do you think the reality really is? Are we close to this? Tell me what you think about that. Cause I know you got, you know, a lot of black married men, right? I do. I know. I know. I mean, I would say 90% of the people that I associate with, not purposefully, but just based on my life, are married men. Mm -hmm. I would say that. Uh, maybe a, I, I can't even off the top of my head think, think of, of any single man. Think of a single man in my in my friend group at all. But um I, I think of one now. 
he divorced though. So <laughs> I think of one man. Um, but I, I I think it's a sad conclusion to be drawing about the viability of men as a marriage, a, a black men specifically. Um I don't know who he's asking or who he's talking to. And I I don't want to minimize a person's studies because I do know that when you do studies, you have a set of data that you're, that you're pulling from. Yes. But I, I, I would, I would argue that his set might not be broad enough. So let that me, I want to go back real quick and just say that he, this is what he found when he was looking at other studies, which made him go back and say, you know what? I need to um, redo this study. Right. Okay. right. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So that, that was definitely not his. So let's go, let me see if I can bring this back so I, I can show you. <clears throat> so in, in the interviews that he had um, with the, with the men that he studied was that many of the men credit their partners with making them better husbands, fathers, and men. According to one of the participants, I always tell her that I couldn't have become who I am without her. Meeting the right person to stay with the right person is probably the most important decision I've made in my life. The men even recognize the ways their relationships serve to combat the negative perception that often surrounds Black men. Correct. Mm -hmm. It portrays us as shiftless and violent and not to be trusted. I think when you see a man with a woman treating her well, a man with his children treating them the way he should be treated it dispels a lot of what folks see in the media just seeing positive men doing what men should do is a good thing and i just wanted to put that on there like you know yeah. i feel like sometimes we we want to um give people not just men and black men but we want to give people credit for doing what they should be doing anyway right so, <clears throat> i mean i because i do have some academic in my background um i i, I don't like to discredit what people have written without actually having an opportunity to to read how they got the conclusions that they got but you know my dad has been married to okay my dad married my mom they got divorced when i was about three he remarried when i was seven and they've been married ever since so i think they celebrating like 46 years 45 years so you know, I don't have any examples in my close proximity of a shiftless or a uh, hypersexual man. And, and he, my mother has never said anything. I mean, he could be. <laughs> I just don't. I just don't know of any. I don't. You know, I don't know of any. It, it never. I'm glad, I'm glad she didn't share that because my mama had the nerve to share that mess with me once. I'm like, mama, I don't need to know about you and dad's sex know. life, really. She, you know, so he's he just he's no. never given off those kinds of vibes, and I, you know, in fact, exactly the opposite. Exactly the opposite. Exactly, but. not in terms of sexuality, but in terms of you know, thinking of women as conquest or, right. um, or, right. or not being able to support a wife and, and kids. I think yeah. it sounds like there was a lot of bias there in terms of who they spoke to that they Absolutely. clung to some of the worst. Um, so, so maybe, they, so yeah. maybe, they, yeah, I know, mean, because those, some, I, I'm not going to say that those men don't exist. Right. And, they are black. They are white. They are Indian. They are all yeah. different, different races and nationalities. <laughs> Those men do exist, but there's, there's so, there are so many examples of even, you know, of whatever socioeconomic status you are of marriages doing well yeah. and yeah. family Absolutely. doing well and men and women working out between themselves or you know men and men or women and women working out between themselves <laughs> yes. what is what makes our marriage work and i think what i really like about some of what this younger generation these 30 year olds are talking about is letting go of a lot of those gender roles that our at least our parents and some of us um you know clung to for so long about who is supposed to be taking care of the kids and right. you know, these women who are taking the the sometimes even having to work and then also coming home and having 
all of the care left to them. Yeah. Um, so I, I think there's so many more examples of successful <clears throat> marriages where they're balancing what needs to be done and they're working through, you know, money issues and whatever the, you know, the issues are. Yep. So. Absolutely. And, you know, I just really, I hope that we get to the point where <clears throat> we start to really let go of some of those um, stereotypes that we seem to keep perpetuating in, in the media. And um, that's why I really wanted to wanted to put that out there to you guys because I knew you would have a counterintuitive answer. <laughs> yeah, so in our experience, our friendships, you know, the marriages, the, the people who are married that we are friends with, they are sharing the duties of the house and they are, you know, um, I mean, that's the biggest thing. They're sharing the duties of the house and they're not they're not letting the societal norms or history or tradition decide for them how to make their marriage successful, that they're just figuring it out together. Um, and my marriage may not look like your marriage and your right. marriage, you know, would look different from the next person's marriage, but we're all, we're all making it work. Yes. <laughs> and what, yes. what I like, you know, you talked about a workbook, um, we we have had the pleasure to conduct what we call book clubs. So not necessarily something written and printed that you know you people can purchase, but people can book time with us where we actually go through some of the principles that we learned in you know in our marriage and talk it through with other married couples. Um, we talked it through with other singles as well. Um, but, um, and you hear just from people having been married for, you know, just 10 months to 22 years or, you know, have grown children and things like that. And we're all sharing together in the same room. And it's so powerful for, cause it has been all black couples that we have worked <laughs> with. And it's just so powerful to see us all in the room you know, in advising and helping one another and learning through stuff and being vulnerable and admitting out loud in front of other, especially for black men. So admit out loud in front of other black men, I have this vulnerability or I have this issue. Um, and seeing those men respond and, 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 you know, we're just kind of there facilitating and we bring well, our experiences to the table, but so many of them are bringing theirs as well, and it's a beautiful thing. So Black we haven't Black quite Black. got the workbook, but the book club is <laughs> is amazing and powerful. <laughs> hey, I think that's that's just fine. It doesn't have to come in the, you know, in book form. <laughs> Doesn't have to. It doesn't have to be that at all. <laughs> but you know, uh, you make a great point because we can reach more people. Not everyone will have that access to us. Um, but I'm just saying that for now, this is what we're doing, and That's we're good. seeing. You know, we're seeing that kind of the kind of things that were written in that article um, that he was trying to refute. We're seeing them refuted. And in real life. And um, so, yeah, he's he's on to something. I'm so glad he is putting that out there. And, yeah. you know, we're doing our part, too, <laughs> to put it out there that, that Black love and Black marriages can be successful and are being. Um, and are. are yeah. Are, and are having success. Absolutely. We ain't got all these black men running around cheating on their wives. You know, it's like, it's, that's not how it is. Like, yeah. I, and yeah. I've, I've, I've started to like recognize how many amazing couples are surrounding me in my life right now. The two of you, um, we, we haven't stayed close, close, but I tell you what, I am going to be reaching out to you more, Yolanda, because I, I look, I want to grow up and be like you. <laughs> For real, well, we can grow up together. <laughs> we can keep on growing up together. Yes, and, Joe, and <laughs> Kelly and Rel and yeah, you know, man and Mich like that. There, there are so many wonderful, you know, couples that are in my life right now. And I just one day I realized, like, oh, hey, that must be that must mean God's got me ready for my man. I'm like, okay, <laughs> I mean, all these couples around me. Let me. I'm like, let me wash my dishes. You know, <laughs> like, what do I gotta do? <laughs> Before you put them in the dishwasher. <laughs> what do 
it's and just me. That- so I wash my dishes and then they dry in the dishwasher. Oh so God. it's just me. <laughs> no, it's not washing the dishes. It's just removing the food particles. However, you, you can scrape <laughs> it off. You can rinse it off. You do not have to apply soap and scrubbing oh. before. You- <laughs> Disco Darren says, I just learned to come in, go to the man cave and shut up. <laughs> Well, we know Disco Disco there is new in marriage and still working through some of that alpha male, those alpha male tendencies. <laughs> but if you have been on your own deciding for yourself every single day what you're going to do without regard for any other person who will be impacted by your decisions, it's going to take a minute to, yes. to you know. And, but wait a minute. You just segued into the next part <laughs> that I wanted to talk about, which is going to be for you, Yolanda. Okay. Because I'm trying, like I said, I'm trying to, you know, have our conversations kind of flow with, you know, in some of the, in some other places that I want to just highlight. So in celebration of Blackness today, we're going to talk about Flo Kennedy. Do you guys know who she is? Tell us about Flo Kennedy, Twan. Let me tell you about Flo Kennedy, all right? So she was an activist and um, she was a black activist and all the other black activists wanted her to be more respectable than the white feminists. They were intimidated by her blackness. <laughs> and so they wanted her to be less mm-hmm. black, of course. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Being black, there's always some, you know, something we have to work through. But Florence Kennedy knew who she was, which meant fighting racism and sexism all of her life. As a child, she watched her father fend off a KKK mob with a shotgun. As a teen, she led an effort to force Coca-Cola to hire black people. As an adult, she um, threatened to sue Columbia Law School for sexism and admissions. After getting her law degree, she didn't stop there. <clears throat> Kennedy defended activists like H. Rat Brown in court. And she represented the estates of jazz legends like Billie Holiday. After a successful corporate boycott, though, she remarked, when you want to get to the suites, start in the streets. And so (laughs) that's when she started to be more active. Her flamboyant style and provocative beliefs made her a powerful and controversial force. Her causes included campaigns to end racist stereotypes in media, legalize abortion, and I don't get this part, a PN protest at Harvard. I don't know what that means. (laughs) But she did found the Feminist Party, which in 1971 nominated Shirley Chisholm for president. Kennedy was uncompromising, never giving in to society's pressures of being black or a woman and utilized her entire life to fight for liberation. We can all be inspired by her example of living her life to the fullest. If you're not living on the edge, she once said, you're taking up space. (laughs) So that, that, when I learned about her, uh, I just had to share that because we are committed to Black history all the time here, even though it's Black History Month. But Yolanda, I love that. Thank you. About, as a woman, and especially as an independent woman, as everyone seems to want to be, you know, you're the feminist. I don't need a man. I can do it by myself on my own. Did you ever have that conversation in your marriage, in your relationship? Uh, We've definitely had that conversation in a lot of ways um, because I have said, um, you know, I am not the, what has typically been thought of as womanly. Um, Womanly is not not the right word. Woman, what? Feminine? What? I would say uh, domestic. Certainly, yes. Certainly, you know, what? You are right. The, 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 the relationship the domestic. between <laughs> domestic, domestic. Good job, Clarence. I like that word. <laughs> so you know, I wasn't the type to be. You know, let's have a warm meal for my hubby when he gets home and <laughs> fix his plate and all those things. And you know. <laughs> <laughs> I, I I sense he wants to put some kind of two cents into this. Part. <laughs> he I, will. I don't. I don't. <laughs> um, and and it's not that I don't do those type of things. Um, you know, I just offered you to cook you breakfast just this week. Um, <laughs> that is true. <laughs> <laughs> 
And, um, you know, some of the, <laughs> you know, uh, but it, it's not what I, I don't know, take pride in. Like, oh, you know, I take pride in, in, in cooking, cooking my, cooking my husband a, a good meal. Um, you know, it, it's just not part of who I am. And so I, I, I actually... We've had the factual conversation. Like I say that and he agrees. And then the conversation stops there. Um, <laughs> you know, and then, you know, there were things like about my hair, you know, if I wanted to cut my hair short or I wanted to be natural. I was natural before it was a thing. Before, mm -hmm. you know, <laughs> you could you could turn on your TV, you can open any app or any, yes. you know, any, you know, um, yes. online social media and see all these black women natural. So yes. it wasn't, it, it wasn't they have cool. pink lotion and jerry curl juice, even exactly. though you didn't have a jerry curl. <laughs> exactly. So, um, you know, and he never tried to change that about me. Be like, oh, you're going to have to <laughs> do this or that. Um, what was, differently. My, what was my only I, rule? I don't care what you do, but you got to do something. Do something. Yes. <laughs> right. I couldn't just, you know, grow one big lock on my head. <laughs> you got to do something. He wanted order. But um, so those are, are the type of. Oh, and then as of late, you know, when I had to leave my job or we chose and we decided together that I would leave my job and I would be a stay at home mom. Um, you know, I really didn't get over it until it was time to go back to work. <laughs> it, it made sense. It was the practical response, you know, but I, you know, I still feel like there's a lot of, of, professional growth that I had looked forward to that I feel like I miss out on. Yeah. And you know, those type the that's the type of thing that was more important to me than, yeah. you know, do I grow as a as a stay-at-home mom? <laughs> you know, <laughs> I I love my children. And so really that really became my focus was okay if i'm going to be a stay a stay at home mom then they kind of become my job and you know raising them and being a, you know going to their field trips and engaging with their teachers and working with them on worksheets or problems at home and getting them through their homework you know to kind of it just became my job as opposed to, oh, I'm a stay-at-home mom, so right. I need to be taking care of my husband. <laughs> so <laughs> the I dark suppose. years, the dark years. Okay, but you learned to hey, honey, hair in the morning. <laughs> <That's right>. Yes. <laughs> so I mean, and and all of that was happening at the same time where he didn't know about the hey, hun in the morning and. He didn't know that he would come home and I would be completely drained because I was really dedicating to myself, myself to what they needed. And I was yeah. ignoring all of my needs at that time. Any other thing that I needed, I was not allowing myself to have. Um, I was just totally focusing so much on them. And so, um, you know, I've, I've learned the importance of also identifying my needs and right. making sure that my needs are being met. Um, and I've tried to balance in some way, you know, making sure that he's feeling special, he's feeling uplifted, he's feeling, you know, respected and, um, you know, that his place in the household, in my heart, in my mind, in my body parts <laughs> is 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 secure and i'm happy with him um so it's really been more of i don't know an emotional uh you know a set of emotional skills that i've had to learn yeah. to not just you know 
be this strong woman who right. doesn't need a man. You yeah. know, <laughs> it, it's not about me needing you in a sense. It's about me wanting to do life with you. Yes. Um, and when you wake and up about every day, him, you make that choice. That's what I hear anyway. That when I, when I, when I, as I get married again, mm -hmm. <laughs> you, you wake up that day and you make the decision that, yeah, it's you and me today. Yes. <laughs> yes. Okay, Disco Darren. He he says that he waited till he was 49 and a half years old to get married. That <laughs> that that's a long time to wait. He said if they don't catch him by 50, he, they, was, he was done. He, oh that's, that's what he told me. So they don't catch him by 50. Date was, was coming up. I got it. I got it. <laughs> right. So she got she she hooked him uh, with, with little time to spare. With little right, time right. to spare. <laughs> And so that is know, too funny, Darren. You're a cracking, but I do appreciate. He says that you'll never hear a man say we don't need a woman. <laughs> never. I can. I can. Never. And, and I've never said those. I've never said those words either. Specifically, you know, I don't. I don't need a man. Um, but you know, the the opposite is, you know, a man is a man is is not judged in any type of way if he is with a woman or not with a woman. Whereas women have been held to a standard that says something's wrong with you if you're not with a man. Right. You know, Darren could have, Disco Darren could have been 50 plus, never married, yep. and no one would have said, oh, what's wrong with that man? You know, maybe <laughs> some women would have, we would have said that amongst ourselves possibly, <laughs> but, you know, society doesn't look at you as like, you know, we had terms like old maid and old right. sister and, you know, cat lady and all these things. Yep. Um, so, yes, we do have to assert the fact that we don't believe that we need men right. because we have been told and it's been put upon us you know, for centuries that what is a woman if she doesn't have a man, right? You know, what is her value if she's not, you know, taking care of a family um, right. and taking care of a man? So, yeah. Um, so I, I, getting back to what I was saying to Disco about, you know, you've had this, you've had this mindset for so long. Um, it does require work and, and intentionality to take on a new mindset that now I'm in a partnership with another person. And not only do I have to, to look after and honor my own needs, but that other person's needs are important. And how can we balance them? And yeah. Clarence has never demanded, I need dinner on the table, you know, <laughs> Maybe uh, I every day. <laughs> Maybe I should have. <laughs> but there was a long time when I was, you know, because I was so dedicated to the kids, I was like, okay, well, yes, the kids have to eat dinner. So I would make enough food for all of us. But really, the focus was that the kids had to eat. <laughs> right, well, you were so lucky, Clarence. She had to she had to feed the kids. So she thank goodness. <laughs> wow. That's like a drive-by. Where would you be? At an yes. yeah, yeah. Yeah. Welcome I, I, in, Bossy Brown 29. Welcome in. Welcome in. Thank you for coming and hanging out with us. Disco Darren, you don't think your wife and I would get past our first year? <laughs> no, I feel you. I totally feel you on that. <laughs> for different reasons. We had we had a year or two or five where we didn't think we were going to make it through either. <laughs> so let me ask you this because um, you guys are on right before Valentine's day and you know, as a single person, Valentine's day is meaningless. And I wonder if it would mean anything different if I had someone, you know, to spend that day with, but do you guys make a big deal of, of Valentine's Day? Or are you like the, most of the couples that I know, they want to, the, the, the love is 365. It's just not on Valentine's Day. 365, right. baby, 365. I mean, it's, 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 it's a, it's a, created commercial holiday for revenue of stores. <laughs> I mean, it has no, it, it has, it, it means nothing. I don't want to say it means nothing. Right. Because to say it means nothing would imply that, you know, we don't think about it at all. And the answer is she does expect, you know, something for Valentine's Day. It doesn't have to be huge. It doesn't have to be, you know, overwhelming, but just a simple, you know, 
I bring her, I bring some flowers home and say, you know, happy Valentine's Day. Or I, I, I saw this bear in the grocery store while I was shopping and I picked it up and it had some chocolates on it. So here, happy Valentine's Day. You know, it doesn't have to be anything overwhelming and out of your way for us. It's, right, not, for us. it's not for everybody. We understand right. that other people have different standards that they go by. Right. But, you know, we we don't we just we, don't we try to look for opportunities to show each other how much how we feel about each other that are not marked by something on the day on the calendar um it seems it seems contrived and it seems forced um in my opinion i mean yeah. and we're very practical people in general so yeah we're going to see through the tactic of okay it was fun when you were a kid and it was about you know the little valentine's party and giving the little you know thing that that's pretty much you know where it it thrives best in my (laughs) because there's so much pressure on put on you like the whole cuff it season and that by valentine's day you're supposed Mm -hmm. to have someone who is willing to spend all this money on you for whatever reason whatever reason you know treat you special um so we just try to treat each other special and think of each other you know when we're out if we see something or you know um we know that the other person we really like we try to do it you know all year long all year round i love that I love that. <clears throat> uh, Disco Darren says that uh, he's approaching year eight. He's still not out of the clear. I thought after the seven, isn't it the seven year? Once you get past seven years, right? You're out of the clear. The seven. That's year what eight. they say. That's what they say. That's what they say. That's what they say. But we, so, you did it, Disco. <laughs> <laughs> you didn't even know you did it, but you did it. <laughs> That's what they say. It, it's, it's, it's. I've no, you know, it, it. To me, you just gotta, you just gotta work through it. Yeah. There's no truth. You know, Absolutely. It, Absolutely. Chicken Wing Dooney says sometimes you don't have to buy anything to show your love. A foot correct. rub, a picnic, a quiet night, or a walk on the beach. Oh, and yep. he's giving away all his good stuff, so he's going he's gonna to yep. stop. <laughs> stop giving away his good stuff. No, keep giving away your good stuff, Chicken Wing, because not everybody is thinking about these things. Right, yeah. right. We need some help. We're 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 ants over here. We're an ant farm. Not we're yeah. not the barrel. <laughs> we're gonna lend a hand. <clears throat> but that's you know we're coming to the end. Like we're at 15 minutes. But there's one thing I want to ask you guys because of course the show's about inequality. We're the space between inequality. Welcome in if you're if you joined us late. Welcome in. We're in a great conversation. We've had lots of laughs. Um, but I have a question that has nothing to do with love or, and what you're doing. Okay. But, the the NAACP is also having a birthday tomorrow. Congratulations! 114 to years of the NAACP. Oh wow! wow. All, All right. right, very nice. Very Do you nice. know anyone who's a member of the NAACP? I don't know if I know anyone who's ever showed me their NAACP <laughs> card, but. Um, <laughs> Being in Black fraternity and Black sorority, we do see partnerships happen between NAACP and and our and chapters of our organization, especially you know at the at the local level. Um, there's always something happening. I'm always seeing announcements. There's always activity by you know our local NAACP, and maybe it's because we're in the DC area where there's, you know, wondering. they're like yeah. the center of, of politics mm-hmm. and, and decision making mm-hmm. for the, for the country. Um, and lots, there are lots of lawyers here. <laughs> so, <laughs> <Triple> <laughs> lots of lawyers. DC yeah. is triple A's. Yeah. A- Attorneys, Account- attorneys accountants, accountants, and associations. Yeah, yeah, right. So all of those things, you know, mean <laughs> that there are people who care about affecting society yeah. here. So we may, I, I definitely, I can't say I know someone who has said to me, yeah, I'm, I'm a member, I'm about to pay my dues or you know, <laughs> whatever. But we do well, see I was the just Because, I mean, between them and, and Urban League, like they're the oldest, African American organizations in this country, and and they're and and I feel like the conversation when when I talk to my black friends is always about well we ain't been colored people for so long why don't they just ch-? it always goes to color you know it's like so if they're here for us and we're not supporting them 
it just got me to thinking who is supporting them and and because to me that's who they're working for and so i was just wondering you know i wanted to ask and so i want to put it out there to the people who are who are listening in the audience find out about your local NAACP and, mm -hmm. and come back and tell me. Cause I right. know a lot of people that's just written them off. Like they're old, antiquated. They right. don't take the, you know, young people try to go to meetings. They just get dismissed. So I'm just curious. I'm going to do the same thing too. As a matter of fact, I'm putting together a podcast with the NAACP president and vice presidents from Minneapolis, St. Paul and Phoenix. Cause okay. I want to have that conversation. Right. Like, I want to know what you're doing <laughs> and yeah. how can we support you? Yeah. To make sure that you're doing our work. Yeah. That, sometimes I don't think that they are. And I mean, if you think about it, there is a generational gap between what uh, Black people of our generation and older, as particularly our older generations, thought that Black people should be doing in order to advance ourselves. Yes. Um, and, you know, the newer generations are looking at that a lot differently. And I wonder if that does play a role into um, the lack of interest. You know, they don't want to, you know, there's a lot of people who don't think Obama was a good president. You know, some a of us, like, you know, <laughs> a lot of black people who don't think he was a good president. Um, for different reasons. For different for, reasons. For, for hugely different reasons. Yeah. yeah. So that all, it, it just gets to that, you know, you hear that phrase, black people are not a monolith and it's yeah. just so real you just it see is. example after example of how real that is yeah. because you know there's some you know uh, people who value what the NAACP does and I think I don't know that they are branded so much as the the National Association for the Advancement of Color People as they are as just the NAACP. <laughs> And, but we keep you know. bringing it up. But I did. So, the, so I, I'm just trying to see, are they keeping up with the times? I mean, I am learning so much and I just figured that we can all learn together. <laughs> so as no. I find these things I want to share. So I went to their website. So I'm like, I wonder how do they appeal to everyone? So I found their website and then uh -huh. there, here's a video. Let me see. Let me get to the right place. All right. So this is the website and it, it looks like they're trying to keep up with young folks, right? But yep. still keeping a connection to the past. But that this video, listen to this, and it's a short one, but this is NAA, NAACP, this is power. You know what power sounds like? This unprecedented gathering of young people. Communities across this country recognize. We value people and we will get it done. Do you know what power looks like? It's rocking the vote, mobilizing for change, fighting for equality, and lending a helping hand. Thank you so much, guys. You know what power feels like? Claiming our rightful seat, sustaining a 112 year legacy. I've worked for the NAACP since 1954 holding our adversaries accountable and starving hate at its root. You know how power moves? It's committing to our cause, leaving a lasting impact with our partners, advocating for our civil rights, raising the next generation of leaders and driving us through another year to a more just world. Now we this is power in every black form. Right? I got I got goosebumps. I'm like NAACP. Like, where have y'all been? Why don't we know more? And believe it or not, I, I always feel like things just kind of fall into place because I know where you guys live. And when I think about Clarence and Yolanda Lewis, I, I don't think Yolanda and then Claire, I think of you as one, which is what you're supposed to be in marriage and the work that you guys probably are doing there in DC. And so that's why I'm like, I want to hear in Baltimore. I want to hear if you guys are like involved in your community that way and, and, and what you're doing. 
So our story is very our different. story is very different. But <laughs> yeah, that's fair. That's fair though. But the, the short answer is, as adults know, we did we did we did a few things in college. We did some things when we were a little bit younger. Um, then life started to lifing, and those things kind of went away. And then our daughter, who has some special needs, became a, a, a huge um, determining de factor. Determining in factor every in everything that we do. Aspect of our lives. Yeah. But that being said, what we always try to do is we try to do some, some giving. We try to make sure we can financially, you know, give give to some organizations. Uh, unit and uh, what's the United Negro College <laughs> Fund? Especially since we had a son who was going to school now, so we, yeah. you know, United <laughs> Negro College Fund, some things like that. Um, but we were very proud. We have these kinds of conversations with each other all the time, but with our son. And you know, when everything was going down a couple of summers ago, and they were doing the marches and for BLM, and those things were kind of kicking off. My son and did you go with him? Yeah. So they went downtown to those things right, to, 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 to join a to protest. join a protest. Um, we, my mom and I flew to Louisiana for the Jenna Six kids. Um, oh, so you know, just my I, I tell a story all the time about my mom who took us for the Martin Luther King Day when we for the big march. My my my. My my mom is a huge, like revolutionary almost. <laughs> She's like and, Angela Davis. <laughs> as as a younger woman, absolutely. You know, as an older woman, she got a family she got to provide for. Yeah, I so, mean, we did it already. We marched. It's up to us. <laughs> we got to figure out to start changing policy. Like that's me. I right, you go ahead, keep marching. It, it's time to it's time to start changing policy. <laughs> right. Yeah. So we try to be very educated voters. Um, you know, vote in every election and educate ourselves, and hold our um, elected officials to account. You know, we've written letters. We've joined petitions. Um, I actually just got an invitation to preview the leg oh yeah, we both did from different or organizations to preview the legislative session um for 2023. So we try to, you know, do you know what we can um and raise our son to be aware of more than just his because I, I think that is part of it. Sometimes we people in general get so entrenched in their own lives that they, and, and their own choices of entertainment and the way they choose to use their downtime when they're not working so that you don't actually know what's going on. You wouldn't know what right. the NAACP is doing because how could they reach you if, you know, your choices yeah. don't put you in a, in a place where you can hear from them. Yeah. Um, and it's easy to kind of just go on marching, doing your own it thing is. and handling your own business. You know, the, the society is like a 24 seven working, grinding, you know, hustling, Absolutely. all of those things. Yeah. And, you know, <laughs> we're not we're not putting ourselves in a position to make sure that what we do counts for other people and not just for us and our own. Ashe. So that, that's it. The short answer is we're not doing enough. The long <laughs> answer is I'm not sure if we got the time to do it. Listen, <laughs> hey, here on this show, I just say do one thing. Yeah. Right. Like do one thing. And if you're already doing that one thing, then invite a friend to come with you to do that one thing with you. There you go. There you go. And there if you, go. you happen to be that person who's like has a group of friends and you've been doing this for a long time, and then you need to come and talk to me so you can be on my show because I want to talk to you about what you're doing. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Now I'll be tuning in to when you have the NAACP representatives there. Um, and did you say from from your city and another city? Phoenix. Minneapolis and St. Paul. Oh, okay. Yeah, because right. I'm gearing up for a special uh, Minneapolis leaders panel, leadership panel, because George Floyd, the anniversary of George Floyd's death is May 25th. So I'm really kind of leading up to that big panel with them. Okay. Um, okay. Speaking with the NAACP and Urban League, and you know, it's May is going to be a great month. I mean, I I always feel like my my podcasts are pretty fire anyway, but I do too. I, 
<laughs> I definitely am on a path, you know, this whole year. Uh, hopefully, like you guys did with your book, bring everyone along with me um, as I'm on this journey because I'm just learning it myself. I'm just really right. starting to feel and believe in the passion that God has for me. Yeah. And so, but it's very clear now <laughs> yeah. that it all starts right here with this podcast. So I appreciate you guys coming on. I have do you have just a couple of more things number one when is your anniversary because i don't know that i saw that in the book anywhere it's not in the book no it's july 12th july 12th that's mm -hmm. awesome so what i was hoping to get you guys to do because i've got this son of mine who's getting ready to get married and he actually introduced me to this book called bound in wedlock okay okay and it's about marriage the history of marriage through slavery and how marriage has evolved in in the black community okay. and so i want to see if i can get you guys to read that book with me and my son and his fiance and then i want to bring on a couple who's a couple but never been ma been married and so uh -huh. i kind of want to have a panel with you <laughs> my son and his fiance and then i just i don't really know anyone off the top of my head but i want to get that third couple because i want to have a whole a different perspective and right, so right. And if we could do it around your anniversary to really help celebrate you, that would be awesome. But we'll oh, wow. talk about the dates and stuff later. But I just want to know if that's something that you guys would be interested in doing with me. It is something it we would be amazing. Yeah, yeah. yeah. We would be interested. Awesome. Yeah. That's so exciting. <laughs> I wrote it down. So that I make sure bound I, in marriage. So I wrote we could it down. order order the book immediately we'll order after. Today. Yep. After Absolutely. <laughs> All right. <laughs> I'm so excited. I'm so excited. All right. So listen, uh, we have done two hours. It always amazes me when I get to like, talk for two hours with anyone and, and so grateful that you take that much time out <laughs> to be here with me. So thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Um, and I usually have some, a couple of like rapid fire questions. Okay. okay. You guys can answer either one of you can answer, or you can both answer if you want to. Okay. okay. So I'm I'm on this kick now about saying the S word because people don't want to talk about slavery anymore. Do you think that talking about slavery makes white people feel guilty and black people feel like victims? I don't think it makes black people feel like victims. And I don't think white people should feel guilty. I think they should take, I think they should feel ownership. Awesome. Do you believe that America can reach its full potential? Can reach... Do you think it has? Definitely mm -hmm. not has. Um, and no. I think you no. don't think it can? No. I don't think it can if some major fundamental things don't change. <laughs> if we don't recognize the history of this country and the impact that it still has on um, Black people and Indigenous people today. Um, and and yeah, I, I feel like what what's the video where is it Beyonce's video where they have a civil war and then they come up with a new constitution that's written by four, like four, all four. women? It's the four. It's, it's Jay Z's <laughs> album four four four. Oh okay. It's the, it's the Family Feud. Yes. It's the Family Feud. Okay. That it, it's almost like that needs to happen. Okay. Really, before this country can start to meet its full potential. Yeah, I, I was just telling my son, I think it's funny that everyone is in this big race to erase history from schools when they very hardly even teaching it anyway. Like, it, it's funny to me that you're make this big push to stop talking about something that we're already not talking about in school. So it just makes me makes me wonder what all the hoopla is about. Right. I mean, because there was they saw movement. They saw these things being discussed more. They saw, you know, DEI become a thing in 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 businesses and in government, and they saw that, you know, the Ibram Kennedy Kendys of the world were writing um, things that were waking people up, and they started <laughs> to say, "Oh wait, no, 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 no." Yeah. <laughs> let's go back. Stop see, it. Let's go even further back. <laughs> <laughs> because you know we sleep again we can be awakened again but if we completely forget if we ban these books if we ban the telling of these stories yeah. then no one will remember yeah. so no yeah. i don't think they can make it i don't think the country will become what it should without and get without a galvanizing event yeah they need Ugh. something that 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 changes the perspective 
on a national scale. Yeah. And uh, we thought, a lot of people thought that was the George murder Floyd. of George Floyd on video. Uh, you know, we, we thought that might have been it, but there's just been a backlash. Right. I mean, yeah. white supremacy is a hell of a drug and <laughs> they don't want to let go of their position and their privilege at I, all. I mean, you you, you could the, 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 the number of things that I thought would be turning points for the country that turned out not to be turning points. You can go all the way back to Sandy Hook, you know, right? how, how can you at that point, you got to say. I'm OK with this, because if you're not willing to do anything to prevent it, then what you're saying is it's I'm okay. OK with it. You yeah. know, so I, I thought that there were the things Columbine. I thought that those were things that would be things that would cause right. the country to change in our adulthood, in our yeah. adulthood. Yeah. Right. And, and yeah. It just the black man will never win in this society. <laughs> and this disco, I am going to tell my son to do it, do it. Do it. He said, tell your son, don't do it. <laughs> don't get married. Ah! Yeah. <laughs> Disco. <laughs> I am just so excited that we have this opportunity. I will tell you, I always see the, you know, the highlights of the interviews that you guys do, but I try to not watch <laughs> because I don't want to be, I didn't want to be influenced by the right. other conversations. Right. And I was hoping that I would be able to pull things out that maybe other people didn't pull out of you guys. You certainly did. You, did. you certainly you did. did. You, you brought a, you definitely brought a fresh perspective and it's always interesting to us what stands out to people from the book. Um, which just it, it helps us to see that we did write to so many different types of people from different walks and backgrounds and, you know, married, unmarried, divorced, widow, you know, there, there's so many that we are, the book speaks to. And it's, it's, it was, a, it, amazes it amazes us, us. again it and am, again and again. It amazes so us. So yes, your, your, your perspective and what you asked and what you, you know, wanted to discuss fresh. Brand new. <laughs> <laughs> That's, good. That's good. And I can't wait to have you on more. Um, I do have a couple of other questions, but we're not going to worry. Well, no, 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 no. I am going to ask the both of you this one. What are okay. you most grateful for? Because I'd like to, I like to end on a positive note of us thinking and feeling gratitude when we end this talk. What are you most grateful for? Most Besides each other, we already know. Right. Yes. We won't. We won't. We we don't have to be mushy. You don't have to be mushy. <laughs> what are, what are... I don't. Mm. <laughs> mm. So many. There's things. so much to be grateful for. For one, you know, we have. And this may get a little bit mushy, but our marriage has survived some really hard things, you know, um, and that is amazing. The, the, the amount of growth that we've seen in ourselves, um, despite, uh, <laughs> you know, I, I don't like to turn the situation to our daughter a lot, you know, when we're just talking about our marriage, because it's very specific to us. And, you know, we can maybe have an opportunity to do that at another time. Yes, but, yes, I definitely want to. Yeah. So the fact that, you know, the, what we were saying, she has dictated so much of our lives. And I always, I find myself wondering, like, who would I be if that had been different? If she had been different? Um, you know, how, who would I be? Um, but I do have to take the moment to be grateful for who I am because of her, um, who we are because of her, um, how much strength and how much creativity and how much um, persistence and, you know, that we have had to show and grow in order to be her parents and to be at this point where we are. So I'm grateful for that. I probably would say now that I've had a moment to, <laughs> to, 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 to think about it is I, I'm most grateful for our support system. We have a tremendous support system and it supports exactly what she's talking about uh, with, with, with Simone, but you know, there's nobody, 
that I can think of that hates on us. <laughs> That, that wants us to not be successful. That doesn't, you know, we, everybody is pulling and pushing for us to, to be. Everything to, that we can be. Right. You know, know we to don't have every success that we can we have. We don't have, a, we don't have no haters in our life. <laughs> I, I can't think, maybe right. Disco Dern. But, uh, <laughs> no, I'm just joking. I'm just joking. That's my guy. That's, That's my guy. Out That's out my guy. They just out here hating. <laughs> No, he's not a hater. He's not a hater. He's not a hater. But we got, you know, we don't have any haters. And and maybe that helps us. And I think, you know, that is what I'm, you know, from Classy T to Something to Say, who have been friends of ours since college, you know, just to, to just in- to friends that that from from Clarence's childhood that are still part of our, our lives Every, and yeah. major parts of our lives. <laughs> Um, who you know bless us in so many countless ways, right? Yeah, you know, just it, it, you know, my buddy took us, we went out to dinner for my buddy's wife's birthday. We go out to dinner with him every, every year, every right, either for her birthday for, right. or, or his, his wife's, wife's birthday. birthday, and you know, just we've been free, and Yolanda met him on a trip that we took <laughs> in 19. 19- 93 was the first time she met him. So, I mean, just, it's just, we got a great support system. Our and, parents, our parents, they do everything that they can. Right. <laughs> and the support so system, was, now that we've gotten on Twitch, has actually expanded. Yeah. Right. So now we got new supporters, you know, who have, you know, from Arthur Javonda, who talked us through this book, to LaDawn and One Reason, who've been supporting our stream since we've go As mods. As mods, yeah. as we're on Tiso Crafty and I, I know you guys acknowledge them in the book. Like, I, yes. oh my God, like that is amazing. Again, goosebumps. <laughs> <laughs> amazing. <laughs> So, so now you, you so know, now you. we have you know this great relationship with so. you, and you know we can support each other as well. So yeah, and I'm glad. It's funny that you would see those names because we had a conversation between the two of us of whether we would put people's names actual- or we would put their Twitch handles, <laughs> and we, we went with the Twitch handles as kind of an Easter egg, so yes. that the people who are who know Twitch know, know. know these people by right. their name. Right. Yes. Yes. And I was. Just just like oh my goodness what what a wonderful world twitch is and yeah. I, I know for one i have i have been surrounded by so many wonderful women like black women even just learning through spiritual thought leader to you know learn how to walk into my boss energy like if i feel like if i don't learn anything else from her the fact that i've learned how to walk in the room and own my boss energy I love it. You know what i'm talking about and you're going to listen whether you want to or not but <laughs> Smiling and and in a nice yeah. way. <laughs> Love it. Love it. Yes. I, I, I would anyway, be remiss to not. Thank you. I, I would be remiss and not shout out my last train of Friday crew. Oh. I can't. I, Mike City, DJ Classics, uh, One Reason, Chanel B, Chanel B, Chanel B DJ, DJ I Rule, <laughs> DJ, DJ Clips, Clips Live, Super Scott of the DJ, and Miss Stiff. <laughs> Miss Tiff, Tiff Star. Star. All right. All right. Yes. Well, listen, thank you again. Thank you again. I'm going to let you guys go and end your evening with your daughter or what, however you like to end your Saturdays. I appreciate you again. For those of you out there who are listening, go and visit your local <laughs> NAACP office. I want to know. I want to know how they're serving your community where you are. Yeah. And then we'll have to figure out how we have that conversation before or as we're leading up to the program that I'm going to have for them. Yes. Next week, I've got Tyrone Terrell coming back. We're talking about gangland and community again. It's really going to be a relevant conversation after this last police killing when it was a black on black crime, which is kind of what Tyrone does in the Twin Cities. Um, mm-hmm. So it's definitely a different. It's going to be a different kind of conversation that we have mm-hmm. because I try to talk to him about what police are doing to black men. He's like, I ain't, I'm not listening to you, and he will tell you that since the last black man that was killed, this is how many black men have killed other black men, and that's how he, that's how he comes. <laughs> my, my response would always be, how many of those black men were trained by government funds? 
to not do these types of right. things. To de-escalate like, and to be protectors. You can't compare no. what people in the streets do yeah. to what trained professionals are supposed to do. Yeah. If that's the, if that's the standard that you're holding the police department to, then you don't need the police they department need, at all. Right. They yeah. don't need uniforms. They I don't need, right. They're just another Listen. thing. In Minneapolis, the cops have given up. So I definitely think that there, you know, there's two lanes here, and and Tyrone is clearly in the lane of let's figure out how we make our community safer, so that you know, because my understanding is these young kids are out here jacking cars just to go for a joyride. Yeah. They don't really like what these young people are doing today, and I'm so far removed from it that I have just had to get to the point where okay, let me just listen, listen to you know all different sides but i believe and this is just you know me taking a little sidestep if we if you are living in a black community that precinct that serves you i believe there's some in my head 75 percent is the number i've come up with will tell you that there's no reason why i've come up with that but 75 percent of the people working in that precinct should live in that in that community I'm in okay that, that. Right. it makes sense it All makes right. sense and, I mean, and to take it a complete different direction, because I know you're you're wrapping up, and I do <laughs> want to say thank you, thank you, thank you so much for having us on. It's been a great conversation, but um, you know, I think that the focus on policing and um, uh, it's not even preventing crime, responding to responding to crime. And, and by basically the police committing more crime, in my opinion, um, is the wrong approach. Why do we not, why we now look at the root causes of why these young people are out in the streets, yes. you know, eat, you know, jacking cars for joy rides or whatever. They're disengaged, yes. they're yes. disconnected from their communities. The, the world tells them that there there's no hope for them yep. that there's they may not even live past 21 so yes. why why if i have no hope for a future if i can't even see myself in a future what does it matter yes i can spend my time jumping in a car that i don't think i'll ever gonna own and i'm <laughs> driving it around so we yeah. don't we don't you know making the police more of anything to me is not the answer making Absolutely. make giving opportunity and education and and healthy communities you know healthy communities yes it's so i love that that's your important. passion and your background we are going to talk about <laughs> girl because yes, I, I worked for a food bank for five years it was my job i did the childhood and adult food insecurity programs and so i i've worked with so many uh, uh, so many panels about you know doing a holistic approach to our communities now instead of just trying to it's like medicine where they're just trying to Treat the symptoms yes, the and, and not the symptoms. not dealing with the with the issue. There you go. Yeah. There you go. We've had these con so you're getting into conversations that we have all the time, which is yeah. one of the best parts of, of being I'm married to her. Yeah. Is we have these kinds of top yeah. conversations all the time. My mom says, Y'all talk about anything. <laughs> and we have these kinds of conversations. So yeah. I, I I'm I'm 100 percent on board. 100 percent So yeah. You know, yeah. All right, before we start another conversation, it's thank not, you. Exactly. We, we, we'll just keep going. We'll just keep going. Good night, Classy <laughs> D. <laughs> right, good night, D Disco Darren, Chicken Wing Dooney. Bye. Thank you for everyone. Thank you, thank yes. you, thank you. I'm not going to rate out to anyone. When I have these late shows, I just let you go. All right. <laughs> I got somewhere that you can go. Hold on a second. I got somewhere you can go. We're, okay. I got now, now you're going to make me figure out how to do it. Because I don't know oh, how to do oh, it. Oh, okay, 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 okay. Where, okay. you, where you want to go? Where do you want to go? Okay. All right. All right. I'm gonna get to it. Hold on. Go ahead. Oh, Tell okay. me where you want to go. Back to um the J5. The J5, yeah, still, the J5 on? still on. Okay. Yes. If we want to have some some joy in our life. Yes. Disco is great seeing you as always. Yes, Disco. We'll see you Tuesday. I just want you to know that I've, I'm always lurking. You may not see me. But I'm in there. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. Yeah, we are going to. Who are we going to? He, I don't have him trying to make a suggestion. Oh, I'm trying. I was trying to make a suggestion, he, but I'm trying to figure your, out what it got. Your flyer. Uh, you know, it went yeah. from Chanel B to. Uh... Is it cello music? Hold on. Hold on. I, 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 I follow I cello music. I don't about. see him up here on my screen. 
Hold on a second. I can tell you where it is. Okay. I can tell you where it is. The J5 Ray Train. <laughs> Let's go, Darren. Say we're going to wind up in China. It's done. It's done. It's done. It's done. They, they, That's they, the problem. They, they, They're already they, finished. They, they finished. They yeah. finished at nine. Yeah. All right. <laughs> Javanda's on. Okay. Oh, yeah. You can always go there. We can always go to. <laughs> we gonna wind up in China. <laughs> <laughs> Don't forget the five on Arthur John. Uh, Arthur, Arthur Javonda. Don't forget Arthur Javonda. We going over to Arthur Javonda, y'all. Thanks again. I really, really, really appreciate y'all. Yeah, Have a, a good, good weekend. We I'm gonna enjoy the Super Bowl too. here tomorrow. All right. All right. We'll, we'll be streaming. <laughs> we'll, we'll 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 take a break to go and watch Rihanna's halftime show. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> All right. Let me push raid now. We raid now. We raid now. All right, you guys. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.